I think what's wonderful about um, the story that you know Rudyard Kipling had written is that it appeals to every age group through time. Um, when I was a kid, you know, in the early 80s, and we watched Disney's Jungle Book, which I was told today released in 67. Um, you know, your favorite character inevitably was 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 Baloo because he was the fun-loving guy. As a kid, you like that, but then when you grow older. Um, you know, your choices change. And then as an adult, you prefer a character like Bagheera because he represents certain responsibilities and values which reflect within you. So what's really nice is I think whenever, whichever stage of your life you watch uh, this film or read the story, there's something for each and every age group to take away from. Uh, there are great sense of values, morals, principles, life's um, learnings and teachings that you can imbibe and take away. So I think that's why the story keeps getting retold. Having said that, I think Mowgli is the most um, accurate telling to Kipling's story. I think the rest have been, there have been certain liberties that have been taken to make it more possibly child friendly. I think Mr. Circus's version is, is, is most honest and true to the original script uh, that Rudyard Kipling had written. Um, having said that, I think you realize that there's a lot more depth in the story uh, okay, there's somebody frantically waving a hand in front of your face. Okay, sorry. All right. Um, no, I'm just used to Netflix saying five minutes, three minutes. I, I was just wondering, are they telling me to shut up? Sorry. Sorry. Hurry up, okay, hurry okay, up. Okay, okay. It's a 30 Not from Netflix. Bike. Not from Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sorry. So, <laughs> so, um, so I think um, you realize that there's so much more depth and layering to the story than what we initially thought when we saw it as children. And I think this representation of the story is most accurate of that. And that's why it appeals across time. I believe there was a question coming from that side. Where? Okay. Hi, uh, my question is for Mr. Christian Bale. This is Pooja from Good Times. I wanted to ask you is, Bagheera is a Black Panther, but he's also mentor and friend to the man cub. Uh, uh, Mowgli, so how did you prepare for this role and was there pressure in adapting Mr. Circus's interpretation of Bagheera? No, no pressure at all. I mean, uh, uh, Andy, I, we first met when I was 19 years old. He's always been a, a phenomenal actor. And then he's really mastered this whole performance capture thing, which when you first start it, you think, what are the secrets? What are we looking for? There's always those um, elements that you're not sure what the priority is, but he could guide me on that. And eventually it just comes down to his acting. It's just like anything else. It's just different distractions with uh, performance capture than anything else. Um, and, um, uh, you know, Bagheera is uh, really fantastic uh, uh, character. Um, um, it was really about... Uh, 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 observing panthers, you know, trying to get the, the movement down. Uh, with performance capture, you get to act directly, you know, with Andy and with Rohan, and we had a great sort of three, four crazy days of, of doing that, but it affects your performance completely. Um, it's fascinating. It's a new, new world of possibilities of uh, what an actor can transform himself uh, uh, into. Uh over here, right here. Uh, Mr. Christian Bale, my question is again to you, Mr. Russell De Silva. Uh, what I would like to know is that you have a knack for completely physically and emotionally transforming into any character you play. But unlike many great actors alike today, you also started out as a child actor like Rowan, perhaps 12 or 13 when you did Empire of the Sun. So is there any point when perhaps a saturation sets in or you feel like you need to take a break considering the demanding roles you do? Yes. <laughs> But uh, could you elaborate a little bit on that, please? No, sorry. No. <laughs> I think the last could bit. Could you elaborate on that? Could you elaborate on that? Elaborate? Um, yeah, you just got to um, 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 stop acting, be human. But Rowan's got tons of different interests. He's a really intelligent kid, way more intelligent than I will ever be uh, in, in my lifetime. And just being curious about different things. And that informs being a good actor. You've got to walk away from it. You've got to walk away from films. I'm, I imagine every actor up here will say that. Um, acting itself doesn't lead to uh, better acting life and living that. And so uh, enjoying your downtime. And I'm always someone who I'm kind of kicking and screaming before I go work. I don't actually love working. I love not working. And then when I start working, I love working and I never want to stop that. So I like whatever I'm doing, you know, but I've recognized that if I don't have downtime, you start to just sort of act like other actors instead of acting like uh, people. 
Where, ma'am? Here. मेरा सवाल अपने सभी अभिषेक माधुरी मैम अनिल जी एंड करीना आप चारों से है कि यूजुअली आप लोग जो डबिंग करते हैं वो बेसिकली अपने अपने किरदारों को जो किरदार आप लोग खुद जीते हैं उनके लिए करते हैं यहाँ जब आप एक मतलब जो किरदार जब अलग से डब कर रहे हैं जो आपने निभाया well, of course, from the roles that I've played normally, which has been, you know, um, completely different to what Ka's character required. I think I enjoyed this a lot more because I found it, I found her voice um, very, very powerful, very, very, it had to be slightly uh, hypnotic because she kind of hypnotizes Mowgli and, you know, in a way to take his decision, you know, and uh, shows him the way, you know, to his journey, the path. So obviously it's slightly hypnotic, slightly seductive, very, very powerful. Um, I felt like when I was dubbing, I felt like, I don't know, I was like on stage. I had to be slightly more theatrical. Um, the voice had to sound like, like it wasn't me. So I actually enjoyed doing it. When it was over, I was like, God, why weren't there more scenes? Madhuri, ma'am? I think it was great doing this because uh, the actor who actually played the original character of the mother, uh, Miss Harris, she did a brilliant job. And all I had to do was just use my voice and her expressions and uh, just get the flow of it. It's a beautiful character. It's that of a mother who accepts Mowgli as a child. He's very different from, her, uh, from their clan. He's a man cub. And yet she goes out. She's generous. She is loving. She's giving. And she accepts, his, her, uh, she accepts him as his own. And uh, that was a wonderful thing, I think, uh, which is needed in the world today. People are different, and you need to embrace something that's different, and that's what she does. And I enjoyed playing her, because she was beautiful, she's ferocious, uh, she will protect her man cub right here at every cost. And um, I, just, I just loved and enjoyed playing her. Anil sir, I'm going to add a little more to the question. When you watch the Hindi trailer, Anil Kapoor is also there. <laughs> like, the way you speak, you know, in real life, and even Balu, there are these worlds that are mixing. Is it is it difficult? And every actor wants to do a role if it's been done before differently. Were you watching what was happening in the English version while you were, uh, you know? I did. I did say that. Yeah, I did because I I would uh, you know try out first, and I as I said it that I if I got stuck, and I was not happy, and I you know I would listen to it because I would go back and forth. Listen to the theater, go into the, you know, do all those crazy things. And, um, you know, and then I had the reference. So I was fortunate that I had the reference of the great Andy, you know, otherwise, still, I think I have to learn a lot, uh, you know, uh, with just the beginning, for, for me at least. And um, I wish I get an opportunity where I would get to work with all these great talented people like Christian Bale and Andy. and. Uh, of course. Abhishek just mentioned. Yeah, Frida. Uh, Frida, I've all, you know, uh, of course I did, uh, uh, you know, the phenomenal film which we did together. It was a great experience and it was wonderful. And again, we are on the stage again after 10 years. Uh, I hope this, this is also... winning awards, basically. No, it's not the award. I think, I think more importantly, we should not think about the awards. I think it's the more the people see it and enjoy it and remember it. I think that's what our reward is. Yeah. So, was it easy? No, 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 no not, <laughs> Louis, not you. <laughs> Abhishek, was it just easy to get the swagger? Because I think Bagheera's character has got a lot of swagger. The way he speaks, uh, he's of course training the man cub Mowgli. Was it easy for you to just be this deep baritone voice which you already have? Ooh. Five mark question. Um, no, it, it was uh, very, very challenging. Um, what was liberating about this entire exercise is, I think for the first time, in, in, in our films, in our industry, there is a huge element um, of your personality that you always bring to a character, which is probably not prevalent in the West. Uh, in Indian cinema, uh, I mean, that's almost um, a prerequisite. What was nice is you got liberated because you got to be an entirely new character and you weren't confined within those boundaries. Um, what was really nice is, I mean, I wasn't playing a human being, so that was new. 
and keeping that in mind and keeping the, the you know the way um, mr circus had designed the character the way you know christian had performed it uh, and then to try and indianize it that was very challenging uh, also um, to fit uh, linguistically hindi into an English dialogue is, is very challenging. They're two completely separate um, languages which have a different tone, a different meter. So that was, um, that was challenging. But um, I think in terms of, to answer your question, I think these two gentlemen brought in all the, 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 the attitude and swag that Bagheera needed. Um, we merely tried to do, uh, live up to the, the standards that they had set. I'm going to take one more question. Honestly, I was very, you know, it was an honor for me that I was approached to do uh, Balu's character. And of course, when I saw the film and saw portions of it and read about it, I said uh, uh, it's definitely more textured and more layered. So it made it much more exciting. And of course, it became a bit, I have to be very honest, because there was, uh, you know, whenever I got stuck and uh, that, uh, you know, what, because you see, obviously, we're used to having the director when we were doing the voiceover, so I was, and in, if he was not there physically present, but Andy's voice was there. So whenever I got stuck, I would hear his voice again and again and again and again and understand what is he actually, what is he thinking, how is he doing it. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. So because it became a great reference for me whenever I got stuck. You see, my interpretation was there, but there, were, there are times when you need someone to bounce. So this was a great time. You know, I, I would listen to it six times, seven times, eight times, and I understand it, and then go and do it, uh, do it. So that made it much more exciting for me, yeah. Thank you very much. And so what was it like working with Andy again? Well, it's always a pleasure working with Andy, and I hope there's many more. Um, you know, Andy and I, when we worked on Rise of the Planet of the Apes, that was my first, my fourth film ever of my career. And I had no idea what motion capture was or what I was going to have to do on set. And it's a very strange thing when you come to set and you watch a grown man in a suit with dots on his face and a camera attached to his head. And then Andy starts performing and then you completely forget that you're watching a man. You're just watching Caesar come to life. So similarly, I knew, you know, working with Andy on this particular project that all the animals, all the actors lending themselves to motion capture were going to be taken care of because really what he's focused on is a performance and not just, you know, the... the the big set of it all. Um, what was your other part of your question? Was how was it? Oh, how did it influence? How did my childhood influence? Um, you know the beautiful part about this Mowgli ad adaptation, and I don't know if any if everyone has seen it, is um, really what Andy does. It's an ode to India. Um, I remember him telling me before. Um, I think it was before I left for South Africa, that he wanted to do my parts in Hindi, and he wanted to attempt it and go down that route. And for all of us who remember on Dur Darshan, we'd watch Jungle Book every Sunday. And there was so much of the human life in the village that was captured in that version, and I have not seen that version anywhere else in any other adaptation. So for me to go to South Africa and actually work with fellow actors, all speaking in Hindi, all enjoying a, um, a kind of a version of the Holy Festival, um, singing a lullaby written and composed by Nitin Soni, all of those beautiful things that I associate with India came to life in this movie. So yeah, very grateful to Andy for letting me speak in Hindi in this film and letting me dub myself. <laughs> okay, that, that, was, that was bound to happen. Your own kids. Haji. <laughs> you want to repeat? Yeah, I mean, he's two, so he not. Right he's now. two. <laughs> For you, he's two. And? So not right now. Not right now. I put a lot of work into this through like the physical side of the character. I did a lot of uh, research on YouTube. And I actually went to upstate New York uh, to camp out with Wolves and Wolf Conservatory Center uh, in order to like observe their movements and kind of uh, observe how they interact with each other. And I try to apply that to Mowgli. 
Man, I like it. He did his research on YouTube. I would have aced my exams if I had the internet back then. All right, ladies and gentlemen, of course, I have, uh, I have a lot of questions, but I'm sure that you want to ask your questions. So uh, if you could just raise your hand and a mic would reach you from uh, friends here. Yes, there's a question. Yes, you could start from here. Oh, there's a question coming from there. There's already a mic. Mic. So shall I just start? If you could just address. Okay, I have the mic, so I'm just yes. going to start. Hi. My question is for Andy, actually. Um, you know, I know Siren just asked you about uh, Jungle Book in the modern context, but my question is actually a variation on that. What would you say is the relevance of the story today, especially with the whole sort of man animal conflict, conservation, the environment? You know, there's like. Uh, kind of sharks, uh, jaws, jaws made sharks scary. Is there a possibility that kids might be afraid of tigers after this? I'm just wondering about all these sort of things. And the film does have layering about these things. Yeah, I mean, I think that our version of the film uh, does, it, it, first of all, it, 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 it digs into the notion of what it is to be an outsider. That is perhaps the most important uh, aspect of the film, what it is to, to feel displaced, what it is to not feel that you belong anywhere. And that's why I think it, it, it will resonate. We live in a world that is full of people who are told to find differences in others than, rather than accept others. And we, you know, th that, that's, that, that is one of the things that I think is, is, is incredibly powerful about, about this story um, of, of belonging. Um, I think on a, on a sort of a very small kind of political level, you can't make a, a version of The Jungle Book now in 2018 without recognizing when it was written where it was set, um, the, the history of the time, and we've tried to bring that to bear in some small way in the film, in the way that the, the, hum, in the human relationship to the jungle in the terms of colonization, in the terms of, um, in the terms of uh, um, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the world of animals having to recede and to be threatened and to somehow survive. Uh, so it is. So there is a, a comment on the fact that that we are daily losing great swathes of paradise <laughs> of, in our world. Um, yeah, and, and historically, when Rudyard Kipling was writing this book and what he means, uh, you know, and I, I firmly believe that he is his DNA is in, in, is part of this storytelling. This this boy that was brought up in India, who whose whose first language was Hindi who then was sent away to live in a foreign land um, and was abused as a child. So I think that those, all those aspects really uh, play into a modern retelling. And I don't think you can actually do it by, by doing a whitewashed version of this film. I think you have to connect with the place that it was originally uh, written and, 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 uh, um, and based. And I think that's, that's what we've done. A uh, quick question um, for your son. Um, what was it like working with dad and doing what he's made so famous the world over with his performance capture techniques? Yeah, it was great working with him. Um, <laughs> obviously, it's, it's cool to see that he's developed this, this way of acting and it's been cool to like, try out you know, the, the performance capture suit. But it was, it was cool because we'd go into work together and then we'd come back and it was just like a normal day, me getting home from work, him getting home from work. So it was, it was, it was cool. It was a new experience. All right, there's Hi, a question Rohan. coming from Rudrani. Yes. Hi, Rohan. I thought you were fantastic in the, in the trailer. What's very interesting is that um, Mowgli, uh, you know, in different versions, has been always seen as this boy who's been brave, but yet there's this cuteness about him. What we see here is more like a warrior towards the end where you sort of take on the world. Um, did you ever think, I mean, if you read books, that you would sort of be portraying this version slightly darker, slightly more 